Welcome to the Templeton Advisory Committee meeting December 21st, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. This is a regular meeting. Uh, the Templeton Advisory Committee meeting, regular business meeting, is being broadcasted live on TCTV Channel 8 and TCTV YouTube channel. Responses will be made <clears throat> will be made to comments on the TCTV YouTube channel as time permits. The agenda and meeting material for this business meeting were posted on the WW My Town Government no later than 48 hours prior to the scheduled meeting in accordance with Commonwealth of Massachusetts Open Meeting Law. The chair reserves the right to add items or remove items or change the format of the agenda. However, the agenda is posted in advance to give committee and public time to review the agenda items and to ensure the meeting runs within a lot of time frame. Again, I am John Kappel, the chairman of the, of the committee, uh, and I'm calling the meeting to, to this meeting to order here at 630. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. Thank you for, for joining us. Again, I'm John Kaplis, I'm a chair. I'm here with Noel, Noel Francis and Mike Ubrod. Thanks for coming. Um, Let's, let's open up with the review and approve for the uh, meeting minutes for November 17th, 2022. Uh, just to note, there was a mistake made by myself. Uh, number three, uh, Alpha. Uh, there was a motion made and seconded, but the the um, the roll call vote, I forgot to put on here. The roll call vote was unanimous. Um, so I'm going to add that. Everything else I, I thought was was uh, was pretty decent. Unless anybody else has any questions or comments. Motion to accept is presented. Okay. Second. I have a motion with the correction there and and second. Any other discussion? I see none. Mike. Yes. No. Yes. And I vote yes as well. Jackie, uh, if you see number three mm -hmm. on the October 19th, there was there was a roll call vote made and it was unanimous. I just said annotate that on there if we could annotate that. That was unanimous. It was unanimous, yeah. yes. Excellent. Thanks for that. Okay, any public comments? Logan, if something comes up on the YouTube TV channel for a question or something like that, just let me know. Yes, sir. Great, thank you. Uh, I don't see any public comments. Excellent. Correspondence. Uh, the October 2022 BVA was was voted in last month in November. Uh, I put it on here again, just make sure that everybody got a good chance to look at that, uh, just more visibility. Uh, and then also I wanted, there were some questions that were from the last meeting that Noel had that I wanted to make sure that there was some answers to, uh, such as where some of those dollars went. Um, so to answer some of those questions, uh, that you had no do you remember those questions uh one yeah, it was about the fire yep. utility truck yep one was the mm -hmm. fire utility truck that there was an allocation but there was zero but there was expended sixty nine thousand. Uh, that was because those were opera state opera funds that were state funds not town opera funds they were state that were allocated that in miss uh senator gobi and uh senator slotnick uh worked for us to get for the fire department so those weren't even our dollars but that's what happened with that one um the second question is about the police vehicle and uh that uh i believe the uh, there was delivery of that vehicle there hasn't been delivery yet because the, it's it's uh there's a shortage of there's a shortage and it's on back order okay so that that is coming though uh, the chief of police has visibility of it and he is working that issue uh but that was the issue that there was uh there was a stock issue okay um and the other question was uh the one mil, 1.4 mil, it's actually 1.8 million, which is the uncommitted opera funds. That that's the that's our opera funds. Yes. Uh, that have been done yet. Right. And uh <clears throat> the capital uh, committee was uh, due to meet today, and unfortunately yeah. it had to be uh canceled because okay. of scheduling conflict right. with Mr. Curry <clears throat> will be a meeting um next week. Excellent. And um at that time will be uh, you'll have some more will be recommendations, and then uh, on the 28th will be uh, 
uh, you know, recommendations to the board of selectmen. Excellent. All right. Well, obviously, uh, keep us posted. Obviously, uh, I'm sure you got the email that there's a meeting being planned right now for January 11th. Yes. That's going to be a joint meeting with the select board uh, concerning a couple things. Uh, budget is one of them, uh, like our specific budget uh, for the advisory committee, uh, as well as uh, potentially movement of the emergency reserve. Um, you know, based on an unexpected uh, issue that came up, um, as well as working with the select board on, you know, uh, hopefully we can talk about the the um, capital planning, the capital from the meeting that you guys have before that meeting, hopefully. I, I have some comments I can make. Okay, great. Excellent. Uh, I did look into the, um, the, fund for the scholarship fund, which there is 2765 in there right now. Uh, it is a non-interest bearing account and it is does not is it's not an invested account. Uh, there's an allocated of dollars that is that are put in there based on the warrant uh, every year and and then it's spended by the the obviously the scholarship committee. So uh, so we did look into some of that stuff as well. Did you have any other questions from that report? And did I answer your questions appropriately? I have no further questions, and my questions were answered. Excellent. Great. All right. Uh, let's move on to old business. Obviously, discuss light and water pilot plan going forward. Uh, obviously, this is uh, an ongoing thing. It's going to, you're going to see it a lot. Uh, I'm still working the issue. Uh, I just haven't had an opportunity to get into one of their uh, one of their light and water meetings, <clears throat> commissioner meetings. I haven't had time to do that yet. Once I do, hopefully, I'll get a better understanding of what their expectations are that way. Our expectations can be met and obviously the town's expectations can be met. Um, obviously your questions are already answered uh, in Bravo. Uh, chapter 90 reform, can you want to take that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, <clears throat> within the text of the uh, proposed letter to Representative Zlotnick, uh, <clears throat> is, uh, is an item devoted to uh, asking him to uh, work on reforming Chapter 90, uh, which is money. It was originally monies. Uh, it's borrowed monies. It's not appropriated monies. And originally it was for uh, DPW equipment. Mm -hmm. But over time, this money has evolved into uh, being used for uh, paving, you know, paving of roads, right. as well as equipment. But uh, the basic problem, as I point out in the letter, is uh, Templeton has 80 miles of roads. And to pave just one mile of roadway is now uh, approximately $500,000 and rising. Um, to repave the 80 miles of roadway uh, on a maintenance schedule involving paving a roadway once every 15 years, uh, you need to pave a little over five miles of roadway every year. And at a cost of $500,000 per mile, uh, you need a minimum of $2,650,000 each year. Right. And also additionally, uh, to keep the fleet of equipment up to date and rotate it properly year by year, um, it really requires a capital expenditure of $500,000 each year. So when you add those two figures together, you get a figure of $3,150,000 per year. And that does not even include you know, the labor and overtime of the uh, DPW employees. Right. And <clears throat> so I... Um, as a result of the conversation that we had uh, when we met with uh, Representative Zlotnick, uh, I, I felt, and the reason why I wrote that is that uh, I think he agrees that there's a reform needed, and uh, <clears throat> and uh, where you know the area that he might be able to help us is um, is uh, using a means testing mm -hmm. for the appropriation of funds, and taking a means testing uh, the relative affluence of the city or town. Uh, would uh, if that if that was to be adopted, and uh, there is uh, probably a, out of everything in the letter, that's probably the one item in the letter that uh, may have the best chance of at least moving forward. But uh, if, it, if there's a means testing based upon affluence, rather than the money being kind of distribute distributed equally, right. um, because Templeton has a median income that's substantially lower than many other cities and towns, if that's used in the formula. It would tilt the monies uh, in favor of Templeton, which would mean that uh, you know potentially more money uh, you know would come uh, to the town. Right. Um, so, uh, so is it really you know it's um, 
you know that that you know I hope that Representative Zlotnick can uh, you know use this letter to act on uh, you know working to reform Chapter 90 uh, at least in that way you know to change the formula so that the money is distributed differently and that is and that you know more money is appropriated uh, uh, and that there be a formula you know somewhat like perhaps the Chapter 70 for educational aid right um, okay. Well, I definitely agree with the means test. I think that's because obviously these well, other it balances ones. the playing field. Yeah, it, it does. Really does. Well, when you figure like you know Concord, Carlisle, or these other affluent areas are getting, or Cambridge, you know, getting the cool. same amount of money as Templeton, you know, the tax base is so much greater. Right. Yeah. Right. Now he he said he thinks it had moved favorably based on the fact that more communities would benefit than not, or does he just think that? I think that he can convince enough of his fellow legislators that uh, that this is a direction that the legislature should go in. Uh, I'd also point out that he's now a fifth or a sixth term you know, legislator, so he's not the so-called backbencher. And, right. and he, you know, he did indicate that this is something that he has at least a chance to work on, as opposed to prevailing wage, which is... That's, that's, kind, that's kind of dead on arrival. That's build battle. Yeah, that, that's dead on arrival. But you know, this is really a chance uh, where he might be able to do something. Uh, so, were you, I, would you be able to put a, a letter together? I mean, I know we got the draft thing here, but would yeah. you be able to put a professional letter together that we could potentially send yes. to the select board potentially? Yeah, I mean, I you know, provided that the contents are yes. suitable. Um, no, which is great. I think. Uh, that's great. You know, it's kind of a lengthy letter, but I, I think it discusses, you know, the issues. Um, it's know, not that bad. You know, the face our town. Yeah, it's not that bad. I think it's uh, it's direct, it's right to the point, it's concise. Uh, I, we just need to, I mean, this is definitely a great idea moving forward. I just want to make sure we get the, you know, so you could give this recommendation to the select board so they can actually, you know. You know what, what I hope is that we could write a letter and, and sign it and do it just like we did for the Main Street Bridge. Right. And hopefully the selectmen will uh, read it, you know, chew on it, and uh, you know, also produce a letter of their own, uh, which hopefully will follow at least the outline of right. you know, okay. this letter. All right. Excellent. All right, I'll, I'll, I, have, uh, any, I have no other questions. Do you have any questions, Mike? No, no. It, it just gives, gives background to what you know, that's what you need to have the, the background to say why. Well, we're going to handle not one at a time. We're going to handle these one at a time. So I'll entertain a motion at this time. You know, if you want to put one in play. Yes, uh, I move that the uh, <clears throat> provisions of the letter regarding Chapter 90 reform uh, be adopted as per the terms of the letter. I second it. Okay, I'll move to second. All right. I have any other discussion? I see none. Mike? Yes. No? Yes. And I vote yes as well. So uh, if, you, if you get that letter drafted, just uh, send me a copy. And then uh, then we can we can sign. Thanks. And moving on to um, the regional school district transportation reform. No. Um. This issue, uh, back in the early 1960s, I believe it was 1964, mm -hmm. uh, there was the original agreement between the town or the towns of Templeton and Phillipston yeah. and the legislature, you know, creating the uh, Narragansett Regional School District. And uh, I, <clears throat> uh, it was crystal clear at that time that the intent of the enabling legislation was to uh, reimburse the um, the cities and towns of the regional school districts, because there were a lot of school districts created at that time. That's correct. And the intent was uh, that 100% of the funding for regional school transportation would be appropriated each year by the legislature, uh, but for the magic words of subject to legislative approval, which is really an ex which is really an exception that you can a loophole you can drive a truck through. Right. Uh, but uh, and. When we discussed this issue with Representative Zlotnick, you know, he uh, pointed out that uh, this, uh, as originally drafted, uh, there are many legislators who uh, are not um, <clears throat> do not represent regional school districts, uh, and 
they feel that uh, there's no money being appropriated to them. And because of that, they have blocked money, you know, 100% reimbursement for the regional school districts. That's right. Uh, the, the problem is that uh, in the last decade, uh, the amount has actually dipped uh, on several occasions uh, uh, below 70%. I believe at one year it was 68%. Yep. And um, it was a, uh, a report done by um, uh, the state auditor, uh, uh, Suzanne Bumpus, and it was a very good report. I read the report, and it was about uh, about the funding for regional schools in general. And uh, you know, the basic argument made in the report was that uh, the enrollment in regional school districts in Narragansett is no exception. You know, it goes up and down wildly, but the fixed costs remain the same. Right, and also that the regional school transportation. Uh, you know, the funding by the legislature, they've underfunded it. And uh, as a result of her report, which I believe came out in 2018, um, there was some reform. The legislature did move on the issue, but they have not gone to 100%. And uh, uh, Representative Zlotnick, when we met with him, he indicated that um, it's probably, uh, it's probably, uh, in effect, beating a dead horse to get a get a one hundred percent reimbursement. Yes, not going to happen. So, uh, in the letter, uh, you know, we discussed figures. In the letter, uh, um, he indicated that uh, he could uh, probably uh, obtain funding year in and year out for a figure less than that. Right. And uh, it's uh, you know the letter uh, you know lists a figure of eighty five percent. I, I think, you know, the way it shakes out will probably be somewhat less than that. Uh, but hopefully there could be, and the goal of that is to have a set percentage you know, every year to help Mr. Kazavan and the regional school committee come up with a, a budget. And also the town, because uh, if they're underfunded on the transportation end, obviously the municipal side has to make up. That's correct. So it's, it's been a floating number. It has been. It should be a set number. Yeah. Uh, you can't budget. You can't budget based on a floating number. So it's floating. almost impossible. Yeah. So that's really the text of, uh, that's really what the letter says. Um, okay. You asked for 85, maybe 87. get maybe 80. 80 would be the, would be better than I, I think it's, because uh, on average, it's anywhere between 67 and 72%, 72, percent, yeah. something like that. So, I mean, but when you look at numbers like that, it's not like, you're still short about almost a half a million dollars in transportation funding. So, I mean, when you look at the big numbers, um, you know, when you look at 72 or even 85, so that's, that's huge. That's like an additional 150, 200,000 of dollars. So, uh, which is definitely will, will aid in the uh, transportation of the buses. Um, yeah, this is great. Uh, as we discussed with, you know, with the representative ourselves, um, I think that would be a good way going forward. And obviously, eighty-five percent. If it gets, you know, even if it's above seventy-five percent, I'd be extremely happy. I think Dr. Casa would be extremely yeah. happy as well. Um, but anyways, I yeah, I would have to change something. And again, I would also probably put this um, if we do a letter, uh, and then also request the select board as well. I would probably this one specifically. I'd probably yeah, send to the first. to the board, yep. so you know, to the uh, school committee and the superintendent, so maybe yes, they could do a letter as well, because uh, three letters are better than two, and two letters are better than one. Right. Okay, I'll let the team motion at this time. If you want to do something, yes, I I would move um, that uh, we accept the language uh, in the letter in the proposed letter to Representative Zlotnick concerning regional school transportation reform. So I have a motion. I have a second. Second. I have a motion. A second. Any other discussion? I see none. Mike. Yes. No. Yes. And I vote yes as well. Great. <clears throat> okay. Local aid reform. No. Uh, back back in the middle of the Great Recession, uh, you know, right about fiscal year two thousand eight, uh, the state uh, cut the uh, uh, local aid uh, assistance to the town of Templeton by fifteen percent. Right, and <clears throat> over the next ten years, uh, the state uh, did restore that by one point five percent per year, until uh, in fiscal year two thousand nineteen. 
the state local aid matched the aid prior to the 15% cut in 2008. The problem is that during this 10-year period, uh, you know, the, the rate of inflation was approximately 3%. So that means that the reimbursement in 2019 was adjusted for inflation, had a purchasing power 30% uh, less in 2019 than in 2009. And so the letter asked that uh, uh, for an increase in local aid by 20% um, as a catch-up uh, provision. and. Uh, and, and the letter points out that even if the legislature was to decide to uh, increase uh, local aid by 20% as a catch-up pr provision, mm -hmm. that uh, yeah, it's still behind. is still behind. Yes. Yeah, that's a lot of money. Mark, would you did you research how much it would be to catch us up to date? How far behind is it still at twenty percent? A good ten percent, you'd say. Well, I'd say we're you know we're ten percent behind, and if you if you receive ten million dollars in local aid, you know ten percent of that is one million dollars. So that, that's a lot. Of, yeah. Yeah, we only have a budget of nine or ten million dollars. It's a right. it's a huge hit. Yeah. Um, Without, without saying, yeah. All right. <clears throat> Any questions, Mike, with that one? No. All right, I'll entertain a motion for that. All right, I, I move that uh, uh, that we uh, accept the provision of the uh, proposed letter to Representative Zolotnik uh, as far as it concerns local aid. Okay, a motion of a second? Oh, second, okay. Any other discussion? See none. Mike? Yes. No. Yes. And I vote yes as well. And these will be all separate, correct? Okay. Separate letters. Yes. I could put it, you know, I can put it in one letter. Or... If we do separate ones, that'd be better for them because it might have to go to different people in the legislative body. Okay. We can do that. Especially with the school aid. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. definitely going to be type of transportation because it's going to go to Chris and this. And this like, That's right. I to make sure we're all on the same page. That's fine. Is that okay? All right. Uh, all right, going to uh, prevailing wage reform, which is, uh, this is a big one. Well, this is a big <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah. uh, we fight the unions on this one, but go ahead. I, I, don't, I don't think we're going to slay that dragon, but, uh, you know, it's really important to discuss it because yes. it is a terrible pinch on the town of Templeton. And I use in the letter the example of the... Uh, of the $140,000 that was appropriated for the uh, senior center roof yes. last year. It's a 4,000 square foot roof. Uh, $140,000 was appropriated. And I think the bid, um, I might be wrong, but the bid may have actually come in at some, a somewhat higher figure than that. It did. It so did. when you look at it, uh, assuming there's 140,000 square feet for uh, $140,000 for 4,000 4, square feet, feet. Yeah. it's $35 a square foot. And if you, um, in 2020, if you had uh, uh, contracted for that privately, it would have been between five and $8 per square foot. So assuming that, say it was at the high end, $8 a square foot, yeah. and then it doubled again, it would still be just sixteen dollars a square foot, right? Or sixty thousand, sixty-four thousand dollars, and is you know the pendulum has just swung too far mm -hmm. in the direction of um, you know prevailing wage, where you know the prevailing wage is close to seventy dollars an hour, and even though you have zones, it's still well over sixty dollars an hour. And certainly, you don't want to race to the bottom where a contractor does the job for minimum wage and is competing with other contractors and have to cheat on the materials. You don't want that. And in the letter, uh, in the letter, uh, you know, as it is, you probably have seventy to eighty thousand dollars added to the project, to the cost of the project of the roof just because of prevailing wage. If there was a modification of the prevailing wage uh, so that uh, the pendulum would be in the middle, so to speak, uh, you know, at twenty five dollars a square foot, uh, the Templeton taxpayer would save money, but the contractor would still be fairly compensated at a cost of uh, nearly $10 per square foot more than the private market rate. 
and, and that's why you know we need reform. And it's um, I I also give the example of uh, I think all of you may have seen the video on TV of the burning orange line yes. train. Yeah, you know, back in July of last year. Well, you know, what first came to mind is you know the the MBTA does not have enough. And I know they're the whipping boy for a lot of things, but yeah, he quit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but they, but they, but they, you know every every aspect of government you know the labor function is always 70 to 80 percent of any government or private function and right. uh, when you have cars that catch on fire uh, it, it is because they don't spend enough money to maintain the cars and maintain the track and why don't they have enough money it's because they have to pay prevailing wage right so you know that that I think is a very obvious example as well as the hundred forty thousand dollar appropriation for the roof you know it's a very you know, there are both examples of why there is some kind of reform needed. Right. There's something wrong with it. Well, and one, of the, something wrong. and one of the arguments are going to be, you know, because if you had a sole proprietor, owner, that wanted to do this job, he didn't, they don't have to do it for prevailing wage. That was kind of like the loophole they stuck in the prevailing wage law, where it's like, if you did have a sole proprietor, like if, if I had my own business and I was a roofing guy and I did it myself, I don't have to take prevailing wage. But since these major companies come in to do these roofing jobs, uh, because, yeah, I mean, I just had my home roof done, and it's a 5,000-square-foot house, and it cost me $16,000 to have it roofed. You know what I mean? Well, your roof's the same size as a senior center roof. Right. And it cost me just about $16,000 to have it shingled, so uh, versus $150,000 plus thousands of dollars to have it uh, rubberized. Yeah, it's it's outrageous. I it is. I, I would have done your roof for one hundred forty thousand grand. I'm sure you would have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me write you a check. Uh, all right. So, so you want is this another letter to to Schlotnick as well? You want to do something for? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. You have a motion. Yeah. Uh, yes, I I would make a motion uh, to send um, uh, you know the language of the letter uh, concerning prevailing wage reform uh, both to. Uh, you know, the representative Zlotnick and um, as well as a copy for the board of selectmen. Okay. I have a motion of a second. Second. I have a motion of a second. I have any discussion? That's you know, Mike? Yes. No. Yes. And I vote yes as well. Thank you for that. Uh, just to let people know, too, a lot of homework went into this. This isn't like something that was just like yeah, spare of the moment, moment like smash. No. Yeah, we we uh, a lot of research went in uh, to the law. A lot of research went into you know, how things are being acted upon and and what, what the best avenues of approach. And I want to commend uh, you know, all for you know great work uh, with the research and stuff like that. And I'm, I'm I'm glad I was able to help with some of it with you. Yeah. All right, uh, moving on to um, all the, the review of the pilot. For the, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> land owned by Com the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Under new business, right? Uh, are we, are we uh, under, under new business? business? It's within I'm the sorry. letter, but it's, it's under business. new business. Yeah, new business. I'm sorry. Yeah, new business. Uh, number seven, uh, request for you pilot for land owned by the Commonwealth. Because again, I don't think people realize that we live in Templeton, but because we live in Templeton, there's land inside Templeton's boundaries that are owned by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, just like in any other you know, city or town in the Commonwealth, there are lands that aren't all of the specific towns or cities uh, within those lands. But uh, as you were saying, you know, um, what, was your, what was your thought? Yes, uh, if, if, I, if I could comment on it, sure. Mr. Chair. Um, a significant portion of the lands within the town of Templeton are lands that are owned by the Commonwealth for recreation and conservation purposes. Right. Uh, I'm not sure of the exact percentage. I know the town of Ashburnham is similar to Templeton, and um, I believe um, their percentage is 60%. I don't, I don't think we, we have anywhere near 60%, but it, but it's a significant percentage. Right. Uh, so, uh, what the letter asks is, uh, we're, we're asking that Representative Zlotnick's office uh, review um, the present uh, payment in lieu of taxes uh, by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And just ask, uh, you know, there's four questions that uh, the letter mm -hmm. seeks an answer to. Right. Is, uh, does the amount presently paid in pilot uh, per acre compare favorably with other parts of the state? Mm -hmm. um, I have a feeling it doesn't. Right. Uh, is the amount presently paid in pilot, is it fair in light of the significant percentage of lands within Templeton owned by the Commonwealth? Uh, can the amount of pilot paid by the Commonwealth be increased? Mm -hmm. 
And then uh, how long has it been since, uh, how long has it been since uh, the issue of payment in lieu of taxes? How long has it been uh, re since that issue has been reviewed? That's a great question. And, and I also have one additional comment. Mm -hmm. and I, I, I would ask that, uh, you know, especially members of the public out there, um, I, uh, this past Sunday, it was Saturday or Sunday, uh, Channel 5 uh, has a, they have a program called On the Record, OTR. Yep. And the guest was Governor-elect Mara Healy. And I think, you know, the very first issue to come up is, uh, you know, what's, what's the, uh, what are you going to do about the issue of affordable housing in the Commonwealth? And mm -hmm. it's a problem everywhere within the Commonwealth. And her answer in part was that she would be looking at the use of public lands, uh, public lands. And the reason why I raise this issue is, um, you know, her response is, uh, I think that that is something that uh, the town of Templeton should keep a very close eye on. Um, because first of all, uh, if you look at the town of Barry and Phillipson and Templeton and Gardner and Ashburnham, mm -hmm. there are literally, literally thousands of acres of state public land. Right. And also the other portion of our comments about use of public lands was that uh, they would be studying public lands that are near major highways like Route 2 or railroads, uh, public transportation, you know, railroad or transit stops of which uh, there's Wachusett Station near um, in Ashburnham, it's right. on the ashburnham Fitchburg line. Right. Uh, and I think what I'm concerned about as a resident is that uh, is um, is how, how much authority would the uh, governor, could the governor exercise, uh, should the governor choose to use public lands? I mean, there's certainly conservation and you know, other boards within the town, but um, I, you know, the governor really has the authority uh, to, with a stroke of a pen, just say, uh, I, I wanna use uh, you know, a parcel of land uh, within Templeton or within Ashburnham because it's mm -hmm. close to the highway. And the legislature, all, all they'd have to do is pass, uh, you know, something that says, that gives the governor the power to do that. And I, I just think that that's something that could really be, uh, I can think of three or four parcels of land that would be, you know, would be the target. Um, and in our towns in eastern, in eastern Massachusetts, Worcester County East, yeah. we have the most state open land that could be developed, you know, should the governor decide to go in that direction. Right. I know I've spoken a lot. <laughs> no, but I mean, everybody wants to move out west anyways. That's the whole point. And that we're everybody's moving this way. As as Templeton feels now, based on the amount of builds uh, in the community that we have, uh, based on the amount of, uh, you know, uh, new folks that are moving into town, which, again, I, mean, I think we're all feeling. I think the entire town's feeling. I, I know the school district is feeling it. Uh, as they said that at the, the last wing, that they had uh, over 100 new New kids in the last in the last right. year, uh, which I think is uh, is a is a is kind of a low number based on the amount of bills that have been here uh, and the amount of new construction that's going on in town. Um, but I mean, we're all feeling it. So, um, yeah. No, did she mention that her use of public lands would she'd also consider the use of DCR property? She just confined it to just very public, generally to yeah. public lands. So it was a broad stroke. A very broad which could, stroke, which could impossibly DCR land. Yeah. But, but I, you know, maybe maybe I am overly suspicious. But the legislature just spent an informal session. You know, they spent three and a half billion dollars, voice vote, informal session, uh, and quite often they get unpopular things through. That right, way. that's how they get things done. Yeah, and. And you know, I guess what I and maybe I'm being paranoid about it, uh, but you know, I can see the scenario where the legislature pushes through um, an emergency authorization, you know, a declaration that uh, affordable housing is uh, is an emergency and needs to be dealt like that, and that the governor can use uh, you know public lands. So with the stroke of a pen, the governor under that scenario could take a portion of public lands in any town, including Templeton, and make affordable housing. Make affordable housing, and then you would, your local zoning, your local people would have very little, if any, input into it. And, and that's, what, that's what I'm concerned about. Right. Uh, 
And I, I just think it's a very important issue. No, I totally agree. That's yeah. a clarification on our state. What did she? Yeah, hmm. it was very well, broad, and that's that's the scary part. That's the scary you, part. It's going to make a broad statement. It's like kind of like subject to legislative approval with the school bus issue. It's, right. Uh, you know, it's very broad. All right. So, uh, you do you want to do a letter to Schlotnick on this as well to get some answers from the House? Yes, the that's, within, that's within the language of the letter. Okay, yes. uh, I'll entertain a motion at this time. Uh, I would move that uh, the request for review of uh, payment in lieu of taxes of lands owned by the Commonwealth, um, that uh, the text of the proposed letter to uh, Representative Slotnick be adopted, and uh, that a copy of that uh, be forwarded to the Board of Selectmen. I have a motion and a second. Second. A motion and a second. Do I have any other discussion? I see none. Mike? Yes. No? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Oh See discussion of and where are we? No, I'm sorry, Del, uh, Bravo, reform of payments to the Worcester County Retirement Board. And uh, mm -hmm. go ahead. Okay. Um, <clears throat> At this time, uh, I believe the percentage is approximately 20% of the municipal budget uh, goes uh, primarily to catch up um, for retirement payments yep. uh, that the town uh, uh, was lax on in the past. And um, so the percentage is very large because, you know, you know, Temple and just didn't pay or they underpaid. And so the year 2036, uh, the town of Templeton will be paying an increased amount to the Worcester County Retirement Board. And over that period of time, between now and the year 2036, uh, it's going to be approximately $25, 26000000 million that's going to be paid. Right. And um, so it appears that the select board has no say over the amount to be paid per year and also has no say over the 2036 end date. Right. Uh, what is interesting in all of this is um, Half the states within the United States, uh, they permit local cities and towns to reorganize or discharge their debt. Uh, Massachusetts is not one of them. No. Um, you know, the legislature has closed that door. Um, I think what the letter is asking is uh, that, uh, that uh, Representative Zlotnick's uh, office explore legislation to either permit the town of Templeton to negotiate the reorganization of the debt or whether enabling legislation can be passed to provide the uh, town of Templeton outright uh, financial relief of some or all of the debt. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's really up to the legislature, you know, the town's hands are tied. The only other option that the town has, and it may be a viable option, would be to bond the 25 or $26 million, yep. but do so over a period of 25 or maybe as long as 30 years because the interest that you pay will, would be offset by the free cash. But I, I really hate bond and indebtedness, but yeah, because you're looking at about 30 to 40 million over. I mean, I'm sorry, you're looking at 25 to 26 million over 40, 30, 40 years. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, but I there's also uh, you know it's just it's just it needs reform or it needs to be talked about because there are there are taxpayers in the town of Templeton who were not even born when this debt obligation right. was you know, first incurred. And you know, you're really saddling, you know, you're really saddling uh, you know, this debt. Right. And, and I'll, I also want to make clear that I'm not in any way, or in the letter is not advocating a, a reduction in the retirement benefits of any town employee. It's not that. It's it's seeking a a restructuring or or a um, you know, uh, extending the period of time. A reduction, you know, lower the amount of money we pay per year, so we extend it longer, so we have more money to play with fiscally every single year versus what we do right now. Exactly. I, I understand exactly what you're trying to, because yeah. I think that makes more yeah. economical we're sense. Not saying we're not going to pay, we said we need to pay over a longer period of time unless. Well, that that way we have more funds available during yeah. the because we have other assets and needs that, that need to be done with uh, during the course of the year, uh, especially the the way the, the town is growing now. Uh, 
you know, we need we need, we need to catch up with the resources of, and services that we have to make sure that all the people at Temple are being serviced. You know, fire, police, highway, etc. Uh, all the services. So, okay, I understand that. Okay, so you want to do a letter to uh, Schlotnick on that one as well? A copy to the board. Yes. Exactly. Okay, I want to take a motion for that. Okay. Uh, I would move that the. Uh... Reform of payments to the Worcester County Retirement Board, uh, that the provisions of the uh, letter to Representative Zlotnick uh, be adopted, you know, as discussed, and also a copy of that portion of the letter be forwarded to the select board. I have a motion on a second. Second. I have a motion a second. Have a discussion? I see none. Mike? Yes. No. Yes. And I vote yes as well. And now I know you had other things that you sent me, so I'll, I'll get to those probably the next meeting or we can get together and go over those yeah. know, individually, okay? Uh, but as it stands right now, I think I think you, you got enough work to do right now. Uh, <laughs> you can for a little bit, okay? But, uh, but I will, I'll, I'll stay in touch with you. Okay. Uh, next thing on the agenda is um, discussion of, the, of an investment company. <clears throat> so basically, uh, and I had that put on because obviously this town is an awesome town. I mean, it's a great place to be. Uh, and I don't see why uh, most of our accounts are non-interest non -interest bearing accounts when we should be able to have some investments and, and treat this community, uh, I hate to say as like a nonprofit business, but as a, as a nonprofit industry and business where we, we take some of those fundings uh, that we have, uh, you know, and say in capital or stabilization and say, you know, we have almost... A million and a half, you know, plus or minus dollars in the in the stabilization accounts to say why can't we invest some of those? Because uh, most investment accounts now, even secure investment accounts, uh, to potentially hire a, an organization or company for the town to hire a professional company to to handle our investments, I think is a great thing because you know getting no interest at all on monies where you could potentially get you know twenty to thirty percent interest on say a half a million dollars goes a long way, and that's that's money that's being made for for uh, for our tax tax base, um, I don't know thoughts. I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm spitballing here, but I thought that was, and I know some of our accounts you know have to be, if I remember correctly. Uh, like I know uh, perpetual care accounts need to be they're they're supposed to be uh, investment accounts, um, and perpetual care accounts those are accounts from the cemetery department. Um, so those those accounts are supposed to be investments, being in some type of an investment account. Um, if they are or not, I'm not sure. I'm still in the search. I'm still looking into that myself just to get some ideas because I know there was some issues with those accounts back in the day. And I know um, the accountant's been doing doing a good job trying to, uh, you know, figure those things out, you know, and it takes it takes years, you know, multiple audits. Um, but I just think I think it's, it's we're at we're at a point right now. This town's at a point right now where we have some secure funds. We have money in our coffers. Uh, where we should start looking at, you know, potentially, I mean, we're looking at a grant writer. Uh, so if we're looking at a grant writer, then we should be looking at other avenues of approach to increase our revenue base and have a, 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 you know, an investment company to handle those funds to make money off the money that's already being brought in, uh, I think is a great idea. I mean, it's just another avenue or another rock that needs to be unturned for the select board to potentially make a decision on what's in the best interest of the dollars that we're saving. What do you guys think? Thoughts? <clears throat> Go ahead. I'll, I'll wait. Okay. okay. Um, I think I think when considering this, uh, you need to consider the percentage of the total monies uh, mm -hmm. that uh, are to be invested. So if you have if you have one point five million dollars in the stabilization account, you know to put all one point five million dollars, one hundred percent of that. That's silliness. That's yeah. Right. yeah. That's silly. So, so I guess the elusive figure is what is the correct percentage? Mm. Uh, I think, and the, again, uh, use the term spitballing. <laughs> you know, spitball a number like maybe uh, you know something in the twenty. watch the show they're like oh john capitalist is talking about investments in an investment company how does that work i mean mm -hmm. I, I i i mean that basis alone does that sound like something that's that's well, potentially something that more i can fun, look into if we have funds that are just sitting not doing anything mm -hmm. why not invest it 
Right. Why not? Why not make money from money that's sitting? Right. And I'm not saying all of it. Uh, and I would never say that. Right. I would definitely work with the, a joint venture with the select board to say, okay, if we're going to do this venture and we have to do it in a secure way, because obviously, you know, tax, a taxpayer, we, me, I don't want to lose money. I don't want, the town does not need to be losing money on investments. I'm not saying that, but I mean, if we have secure, if we can get some type of secure investment from a company that's, that, that, that's their professional business, uh, could we take a percentage of dollars from like stabilization or from wherever uh, and say, okay, well, in our, you know, in our management policies, we can actually, they can add, but the select board can add, well, we can, we like the idea. It's a great idea. You guys are advising us. This is awesome. Can we do this? Number one. Yes or no? Yeah. Number two, what would be the percentage? And number three, who's going to write the management policies to develop under an investment account? You know, you're going to hire XY investment company and you're going to invest X amount of dollars and 10% is going to come from this, 10% is going to come from that, and 5% is going to come from this. So now you have a total of 25%. Where's it, then who's going to manage it? You know what I mean? Um, I, I'm just looking at other, other avenues. I mean, I know other cities and towns are doing it. Um, and I, I think that Templeton should jump on board the same way. I don't know. I mean, what do you guys think? I would agree with that. Uh, I think I think the percentage of the funds invested is obviously an issue. I think the time horizon of the funds is an issue because yeah. um, you know the, the longer the time horizon, the more you give that particular slice of money a chance to grow. Right, so that's something that has to be discussed. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, certainly, uh, I, I certainly would be in favor of recommending that to the board of selectmen. Uh, you know, there must be a town that has, uh, you know, best practices. Mm -hmm. Must be, you know, there must be five or ten towns in the Commonwealth that have, you know, best practices. And you know, maybe maybe the uh, the ideal thing is to, you know, talk with that their town managers or boards of selectmen to, uh, you okay. know, to see what they've done. Okay. Uh, and I believe the one local town uh, uh, perhaps be the town of Westminster. Mm -hmm. uh, they've always, to me, been the uh, you know, a well-run town, mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe they have some thoughts on that subject, uh, okay. and they're local. Great. Uh, at least I'll, I'll do some more homework, and I can, uh, I'll bring some more information back to, to the committee. Okay. Just an avenue, another avenue of revenue. That's it. It's just another, there's, especially now, especially now where we're, money's tight. Right. Mm -hmm. Look at new ways to make money off of money we have. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. All right. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll look more into that and get more information back to the committee. Next thing we had was uh, was Delta plan on money projection and usages. Um, I mean, obviously I put that on there, but I mean, obviously projections has is, is always been challenging and uh, financial and money projections. I know I, you know, uh, camera was big on that. Uh, I'm not 100% sure how that works. So I was trying to get some input from you guys as far as how, what do you, what do you projections are? What do you think the projections should be or how the projection should be put forward? Because money projections are hard. Mm. You know, um, we do project during budgetary season because we have to project the next fiscal year, you know, based on the historical data for the last three years. Um, but it's going to be even more tough this year. Uh, well, it's always every year is going to be challenging. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, you know, growth is here, but we were only down here, you know, so I mean, obviously it's going to be, but we we're pretty stable. Well, this this town has come a long way. Uh, to see where it is today, uh, where we are stable, where we have money in our coffers, um, and we have a good direction going forward, and we have good stability. So, I mean, with all that being said, um, there's still always avenues of improvement. Uh, that's why if you look at the audit reports, uh, I always loved the audit reports. I mean, when the first audits were done, uh, when I was in office, uh, I think it was like 36, you know, the negative was like 36 pages long of negative results. Uh, that was the first one that was done back in 2016 for like the last five five years prior. Uh, now the negative reports like a, not even a page because all the things that we were supposed to be doing, we have been doing and uh, it's been catching up with us on, on a positive note. But um, but I'll look more into that as well as far as that. And that's, I'm actually gonna give, uh, give Cam a call and just try to pick his brain a little bit because uh, he's really uh, intelligent on that projection stuff. 
Peter, I just don't mind. No, don't no, mind. no. All right. So, um, okay. Hey, just to give some insight. Uh, obviously, we're in discussion. Any other discussion? Yes, I have. I have an item. I have some too. Go ahead. You go first. Um, my item for discussion. Uh, I, I know you were with me at the all boards yes. meeting the other yes. night, and uh, what what I find very disturbing is the uh, is the fact that uh, we we have the friends of the Templeton elders. And, yes. Uh, it appears that there was a changeover. And it appears that it was a uh, it was a very um, ragged transfer. Okay. I guess to put it kindly. Mm -hmm. And what I'm concerned about is uh, okay. I uh, <clears throat> I uh, urged one of my friends to donate a sum of money uh, to the food pantry uh, with the idea that it be invested permanently. And uh, mm. And so that you know that money was uh, donated and accepted you know under the old uh, you know under the old members, mm -hmm. and uh, you know the idea of it was uh, to use the dividends or interest from that money, you know combine it with other monies that were donated that way, and to use the dividends or interest to uh, purchase food and supplies for the needy in town. Mm -hmm. And when I had a conversation uh, about six months ago with the present head of the Templeton Food Pantry, it's actually a church, and they appear to be doing a very good job, you know, they're bringing in a lot of food and the like. And I told him about the situation, and he um, knew nothing about it. He was just, he said he was just handed over a sum of money, and that they spent the money, and, you know, and they're just moving forward. Well, what? So what church is handling the food pantry at the uh, New Life? The New Life Church, the one that was it? Yeah. The, wasn't it the church that was at the at, school? Yes. Yeah. yeah the school they there. took over the food pantry? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh. And then this is the other, this is the whole, mm. I guess what I'm asking That's... And as a taxpayer mm. is that you have the friends of the Templeton elders out there, which is a private 501c3. It is. But it is taking money from the public. Of which my friend was one of them. They'd taken money from the public. Mm -hmm. and they, it appears, sole intent use of what direction? Right? Yes. Yeah. And it appears they have not adequately accounted for that money. So you, you got that issue. And then you have, you know, the food pantry where, you know, went from, um, you know, one organization to the other. And there was a transfers of money and it appears that that transfer was botched. So... What I think needs to be done is, you know, advisory and the board of select, in particular the board of selectmen, they are oversight boards. And these are monies that were expended by Templeton taxpayers for the good of the town. And, you know, it appears that, uh, you know, in my mind, there's not been an adequate accounting of the money. And it appears that, uh, you know, the handover was uh, bungled or delayed. And, and I just think in the interest of transparency, I think that the, you know, the Board of Selectmen, you know, should get involved and have, you know, have the people who are involved, you know, both past and present, and, and just get facts, just get mm. facts from them. Uh, you know, may, maybe the, I, I, I don't want to infer that, you know, there's anything illegal going on. It's just, it seems to me, uh, well, I hope this is the case, that it's just a case of maybe, you know, poor bookkeeping or, or a lack of accountability. Okay. Don't 501c3s have to do an annual statement? They do have to do an audit, but if they do a card, uh, as long as the card's done annual, which again, from my from my knowledge, their annual card has been submitted to the Department of Revenue, so uh, it doesn't have to be like a full blown audit like we do, because uh, again, it depends on. But they still can be audited. Oh sure, yes. sure, sure, sure. I mean, uh, I mean, the Department of Revenue can definitely. They are 501c3 under the Commonwealth Massachusetts, uh, but. So what's your approach? So do you want to potentially do a, a you know some type of you know memo request to the select board saying, hey, you know this is what's what I feel is going on as far as this committee is concerned, and I think that the select board should have some some oversight as far as you know where things are going and how things are going in that department based on the fact that the funds are you know coming from the residents uh, and the elders of the town of Templeton. Are you looking for some type of vote? I mean, because again, I don't know how much authority so we have, which is probably none, um, but we do have 
uh, the ability to at least advise the select board to say, hey, you know, we feel that this is something that needs to be looked into um, how you guys do it, meaning how the select board handles that or how the select board office handles that. Uh, that's going to be on them, but we can stay on top of that with some oversight of them to say, hey, well, we, we think this is a problem. Mm -hmm. How do we get to the bottom of it and fix it based on the potential debacle that's going on here and the fact that there's no transparency here? And um, and to be honest, I mean, we don't know, you know, what dollars have been sent. There's been a lot of people that have donated. Uh, a lot of organizations have donated to the Friends of Templeton Elders. Um, and, yeah, I don't think, and I think there's a, I don't know if there's a, I don't think there's a miscommunication issue between like the people that are currently running the, uh, you know, the facility, uh, the council on aging facility um, and the council on aging itself versus the, you know, just Templeton Elders uh, 501c3 organization. I don't know what there's a miscommunication between those two groups itself, because they're supposed to go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, well, you'd have to go back and look at their charter and look at well, it's kind of weird because Templeton's because even the the Council on Aging director was hired by the five one c three organization. It's not hired by the town of Templeton. It's hired by the five one c three. So it was actually made and developed. So the intercourse was 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 tight. There was a there was definitely a a cohesion there uh, between both organizations, the five one c three group plus the Templeton, you know plus the uh, Council on Aging. So, um, and I know that specifically because I mean, obviously, that's I mean, when I was uh, on the select board. So I mean, I think, I mean, I have no problem, you know, providing some mm -hmm. type of documentation to the select board if that's something is, that the committee wants to do. The Friends of Templeton Elder is still an active organization where they're receiving. Funds. Yes. Excuse me. I had a motion. Yes, they are. I had a motion. Oh, good. I don't know how to put this. Here we Be go. nice, though. <laughs> this is the motion that I vote up. If they're re still okay. receiving funds, yeah, do we have the ability, not us, but the select board, to look in and say, how are you executing those funds? That's a great question. I, I mean, I think the town as a whole, because it's coming from town taxpayers, yeah, and also outside organizations. But you see what I'm saying? Yeah, it's an entity that is supposed to be in support of this, right? How are you supporting this? Right. What are your actions based on what you're receiving to support this organization? Right. What's your intentions here? How is it? How are they? How are you guys working together? I mean, I think those questions could be asked by the select board. I don't think there's any. I don't think there's no. I don't think even the select board could do like a directive thing. They can ask no. the questions yeah. uh, because they are a five one c three. But I think uh, it's something that they should be looking into. That's uh, the motion that I drew up right there. Uh, <clears throat> Move to have the advisory committee have the advisory recommend to the Templeton Select Board that members of the Friends of Templeton Elders be invited to a meeting of the Select Board in order to provide an accounting of the financing of Friends of Templeton Elders from 2018 to present. Okay, I think that covers the handoff period. Mm. I, I think you're right. Um, all right, so you want. And ideally, hopefully, they'll come before the board of selectmen and they can answer questions and they can be, you know, an accounting. Right. And that, that would be a good joint board between the. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, you know, I'm not looking to, you know, have a, like a. Order chamber. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no, no. But I think, I think, no, no, no. No, no it's tax pay. We should ask them. To explain. The inquiry. Yeah. yeah. No, we should ask them to, to explain, you know, what right. is going on. And, right. Uh, you know, if. Uh, well, you want people if they're gonna donate to a five hundred one c three to feel comfortable that the money they are donating is going specifically the purpose they're donating for, right? Well, as you know, we have other five hundred one c three groups here in town. Them. Yes, and uh, I think you know, and those other groups uh, are very transparent. Mm -hmm. Um, you have to be. Uh, yes, because of uh, how things break right, right, right. So I guess what bothers me is that there, there does not seem to be the degree of transparency that there should be. Mm -hmm. And it also appears that the principals have moved out of town and are not even in town anymore, which, you know, you really should have people who live in town or, right. you know, run something like that. Right. Um, well, that's usually one of the requirements, I know, at least for one of the other organizations that we're so fond of. Um, okay. Okay. 
All right, so do you, would you like me to put something together for the select boards that we ask him? I'll uh, you know, invite and you know I you know the motion says ask that uh, invited is a good word. be invited. Yeah. All right. I'll uh, no, we're recommending that the board of select, the select board invite uh, you know members of the friends of the Templeton elders to come to a meeting. Okay. Of the select board in order to provide an accounting of you know tell tell them what's been going on. Okay. So I have a motion. I have a second. Second. I have a motion. A second. I will make sure that the uh, did you get that, Jackie? Yes. I'll get your copy of the this. select board yeah. and the Being, appropriately accept donation. Yeah, and also get have them invited to potentially invite to a select board meeting so they can they can tell the select board how their things are going. Yes. Okay. And this is Friends of the Elders. Yes. Mm -hmm. Templeton Elders. You gave her a copy. You gave her a copy of this, right? I, I I'll get your I'll, she because the wording is right here in this. Yeah, I have yeah, I have, I'll get your copy of this as well, Jackie. Well, you, you handed me in the beginning. This one? Do you have this one? No. Okay, I'll get you this one. Okay. The wording's in there. So okay, I move to a second. Any other discussion? I see none. Mike? Yes. No? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Excellent. Um, a couple of things coming up down the pike. Are you, is, that, is that you good with that? Good with that. You good? Yeah. All right, good. All right, here we go. So uh, a couple of things coming down the pike. Obviously, uh, the town reports due is uh, due January 31st. Um, Mike, uh, I'm turning this to you. Uh, town reports due... January 31st, if you can have one uh, like a like a draft by January 15th, um, if you need a copy of the old town report, uh, I can get one to you uh, or I think it, I have it. it's, it's in digits so we can get uh, Holly or Jackie can send you the uh, last year's town report. Yep. Um, I, I think I did that one. I think, yeah, I did that one. So um, it's not that bad. Uh, just keep, you know, obviously keeping track of especially the, um, the emergency fund, because we did expend some of the dollars from that. Um, so that so the people know, because again, this this report is like the history of the snapshot of the, of the previous year of everything that we've accomplished and did. Oh, you did write that one? Yeah. Last year? Before, you, before, you, uh, before I left. Oh, okay. Yeah, he wrote that one. <laughs> yeah, so well, he'll, 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 he'll send it to you. Yeah, he's, <laughs> yeah. he's actually, uh, he's coming on board. This is... This is Mr. Rivard. Uh, he's going to be, he just put his paperwork in. Uh, hopefully, um, the Board of Selectmen on December 28th, they should be taking your uh, application in and hopefully appointing you to the to the committee. Uh, so our, our first official meeting with you will be after you get sworn in would be the, uh, would be January 11th, um, which is, again, it's an emergency meeting. It's not the, the third Wednesday of the month, uh, but that's a, a joint meeting with the select board. Okay. Uh, so. Well, uh, after this meeting, we can give out like emails and stuff, just so, so he has the information. Right. Okay. All right. Great. Uh, so, town report. You got that? Yep. Okay. Excellent. Uh, Main Street Bridge. Just so everybody is aware that the um, uh, our letter, as well as the select board's letter, did go to the to the governor's desk for the three million dollars for the Main Street Bridge. We're still waiting to hear back. So we did uh, we did ask the uh, water department. Uh, to also write a letter to go to the governor's office as well. Uh, I did have a conversation with uh, with Mr. Lamontagne today to see if he can, you know, ping um, Senator Gobi, uh, which I'm also going to call Senator Gobi's office as well tomorrow, just to you know to follow up, find out where this stands because obviously the the governor only has a few weeks left before he moves on to greener pastures. And uh, and the new governor takes office, then we'll have to rewrite new letters again. If, and I hope we don't have to do that. Uh, okay, um, I'm going to be starting a new process of running log of do win and do out. So basically, it's going to be an Excel sheet of things that we're working on and where they stand. So we all have a clear understanding as far as you know things moving forward because we have a lot of awesome ideas uh, and recommendations that are going to the select board. So we want to make sure that they're tracked. So we have an idea so of where things are. Track of what oh, my Lord. I, I mean, I would go crazy if I didn't do that. Um, also, to the uh, doing a request to the zoning board as well at our next meeting, which will be the third Wednesday of January. Uh, we're going to start talking some zoning board issues, um, meaning like uh, the way the bills are happening in town. I know there was some talk of uh, uh, like a like a referendum or some type of moratorium of building, but obviously that was not that's not that was, I guess, shot down. Uh, someone brought it up. I don't know where it came from, but someone, anyways, was talked about. And I'm like, well, 
right now the uh, the way the zoning is in Templeton on one side of Route Two, it's two acres to build. On the other side of Route Two, it's one acre to build. You know, obviously, what I want to talk about uh, on that second uh, or third 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 Wednesday is going to be making it consistent across the board. So it'd be two acres on both sides, and that would actually stop uh, a lot of the a lot of the bills. Um, meaning versus, I wouldn't say it's going to stop, but I mean it's definitely gonna, hopefully going to slow it down a little bit to where we can have some some stability because right now it's, it's still the same open space. That's correct. That's correct. So that's coming down the pike just to keep everybody in the loop. Um, let's see what else I got here. That's all I have. Unless anybody has anything for me. Okay, member comments? No, you have anything? I mean, you talked a lot tonight, so you, yeah. your mouth must be dry. You want some water? <laughs> <laughs> Nose them down. And, yeah. and just well, and just for everybody's yeah. purpose too, it's it's Noel's birthday too. So happy birthday, Noel, on TV. Say happy birthday, everybody. Hey, happy, happy birthday, Noel. <laughs> <laughs> yep, he's uh, 25 today. Um, <laughs> it was, it was. Uh, Mike, you have anything? No, I'm good, John. You're good. Uh, and I think I'm good too as well. Uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us. I want to make sure everybody has a safe and Happy holiday. Uh, watch out for the weather coming in this Friday. Uh, it's going to be really windy and rainy, so please be careful out there. Uh, and thank you for joining us. Hey, motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. I have motion to second. Any other discussion? I see then, Mike. <laughs>